Hello, welcome to worship. We are now at the third Sunday of Advent. This season is going quickly, but for this time that we have ahead of us to share, we invite you to center yourself, to slow down, to be present as we worship together. So a few things as our worship begins, you'll see that we have our two candles lit from the last two Sundays. Today, we will be lighting the pink candle, the candle of joy. You're welcome to light a candle or multiple candles along with us, whatever works best for you where you're worshiping. We also encourage you to get the food and drink that you will receive for communion, because as always, we will share in communion today. If you haven't visited the website, we encourage you to do so. That's icdisciples.org. Um, and I want to especially encourage you to click on that connection card and to fill that out. We love to know that you're out there worshiping with us. So if we haven't already gotten a chance to know who you are, to interact a little bit, um, we'd love if you fill that out so that we can do that. Now, as we get ready to worship, we typically begin with song, and that's what we will do today. Today, our opening hymn is Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn. If you have a copy of our Red Chalice Hymnal, uh, it is number 138 in the Chalice Hymnal. Uh, whether you have the hymnal or not, the words will be on the screen, and we hope that you'll sing along. Let us worship together. join me in this prayer adapted from Words for Worship by Sarah R. Speed. Holy God, Christ with us, once again we bow our heads and once again we close our eyes. Once again we draw ourselves closer to you in prayer. Meet us here. Surround us with your loving presence. From sunrise to sunset, you fill us with awe. For that, we pause to give you gratitude. Thank you for the way the sun shines through our windows, for the mist rising off the river, for the warmth of a cup of coffee, for the joy of returning home, for the beauty of a crowded table, and for the glory of a sky full of stars. God, we are in constant awe of you. We are reminded that there is nothing you cannot do and there is no grief that you do not know. For that, we give you thanks. However, even with this good news at hand, we know that there are many in this world who cannot find the energy to practice awe or wonder 
because they are so deep in grief. So today, gracious God, we pray for those for whom awe feels out of reach. Be with every parent who worries about a sick child. Be with every child who worries about a sick parent. Be with every person waiting on the doctor's phone call, waiting on the next month's paycheck, waiting for the next warm meal. Holy God, surround those with broken hearts who are trying to stitch the pieces together, praying that one day they might be able to feel awe again. All the while, we will keep gathering together and turning to you to remind us that you are the God of the impossible. You are the one who floods our world with awe. You are the one who knows our names. So together we pray, using the words your son taught us, saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How does a weary world practice joy? By dancing and throwing birthday parties, by hanging Christmas lights and holding sleepy babies, by singing loudly and looking for good news, by telling the story of Jesus and showing up for our community. There are a million ways to practice joy. So today we light the candle of joy as a reminder and a charge. With God's help, May we bring joy into a weary world. Amen. the last time that you were really amazed by something? Can you think of something in your head that's truly amazing? The word amazed means to be filled with wonder and surprised, to be overwhelmed with awe. You know, when you are small, it's probably easier to be amazed because you're having so many experiences for the very first time. Maybe it's the very first time that you get to see what a snowflake really looks like 
because one falls on your coat. Or maybe the first time that you see a mama deer nursing her baby fawn. Or maybe it's when you see the colors of the rainbow painted across the sky. When we get older, it can be harder to be amazed. We get more distracted. We're actually less open to exploring and learning new things. There's a lot of things that we know And we may even think that we need to go far away or see something really big in order to be amazed. But amazement can be a choice because there's as much to be amazed by in this room or just outside the doors or in this neighborhood or in this town as there is clear on the other side. Of the world. There's a book that I would encourage you to take a look at. This one is called You Are Stardust by Ellen Kelsey. And it is a beautiful book that talks about a lot of amazing things that we don't think about very often. And it reminds us of our connection to the earth and the cosmos. I'm going to read you just the first page or two here. It starts by, you are stardust. Every tiny atom in your body came from a star that exploded long before you were born. And it goes on and talks even more about all of this incredible stuff um, on the earth, all of the things that we um, share in common, all the different ways that we are connected with each other and with nature. So um, I would encourage you to check it out. You are stardust. Before we pray, I want you to think of something that's really amazing that you want to thank God for, okay? So let's think of that really quick here. All right, let's pray. Dear God, there is so much in our world that we are thankful for. There are so many amazing and incredible things. God, we thank you for all of these amazing things that we have just thought of, that we've noticed. God, you are truly amazing. And we ask you to help us to always look for all of the wonderful things that you are doing in the world, that other people are doing in the world. May we continue, help us continue to find amazement all around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In this season of Advent, most of us are anticipating hearing the story of Jesus' birth. But there is another birth we have been waiting for. It is that of John, the one who came before Jesus, the one who prepared the way for Jesus. Today we hear the story of this birth as we read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 57 through 66. Let us listen for a word from God. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zachariah after his father. Please, mother said, no. He is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began to motion him to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing table, tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came all of the neighbors, and all those things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard him pondered them and said, 
what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. May God's blessing be added to our hearing of this word. I don't know about you, but there are some passages of Scripture that just make me wonder, and today's story is one of those. Now, the thing I wonder about, it is not John's birth. It is not the religious rituals. It's not the name that is chosen. The thing I wonder about is the amazement of the people who were gathered there for that special day. Here are Zechariah and Elizabeth. First-time parents in their old age. This is the child they've prayed for, the child they've waited for, the child they doubted would actually come. And here he is. And they are, as we learned earlier in Luke's Gospel, faithful Jewish people. Zechariah serves as a priest. Both of them are from the lineage of Aaron. They have seemingly done everything right and worked hard to be faithful. Maybe if everyone is going to be amazed, they should be amazed that here, so many years after it was first anticipated, they actually had a child. Maybe if everyone is going to be amazed, they should be amazed by the fact that with a newborn in the house, Zechariah and Elizabeth could get it together well enough to show up on the eighth day for the rituals of their faith, the circumcision and the naming. But when we read the Gospel of Luke, what we hear is that it is after Zechariah wrote the words, his name is John. It is then that we are told that the people were amazed. So what were they amazed by? Perhaps they were amazed that a family so steeped in tradition would break from the traditions of the faith and not use a family name. That's certainly spoken of. Perhaps they were amazed that John was in agreement with Elizabeth. After all, it's not lost on me, nor on many of you, that Elizabeth had already said that the baby's name was John, and they all doubted it until Zechariah confirmed it. 
In actuality, it's quite easy to read past the statement of their amazement. It's also quite easy to get snarky about their amazement. And it is even easy to just assume that there's a whole lot of amazing stuff going on in these early stories in the Gospel of Luke. But do we ever really wonder about it? Because I wonder what it really means for them to be amazed. Well, if we look at other instances in the Gospel of Luke where amazement comes up, it happens typically when people experience the unexpected actions of God. And that was certainly happening here. Not only was John an unexpected child, but his life would be spent preparing the way for one who would come to bring peace and justice to Israel and to the whole world, both of which, while hoped for, were highly unexpected under the power of the Roman Empire. And this whole experience with Zechariah losing his voice and the people wondering what was going on and what he had heard and what this baby would be, perhaps there are plenty of reasons for them to be amazed at God's unexpected actions. So what about us? Liesl Gwyn Garrity, in her reflection in our Advent devotional, asks this. When was the last time you were truly amazed? She goes on writing, I don't mean surprised. There's much about this world that should shock us. I mean amazed, wrapped up in wonder, absorbed in an unexpected delight. We have been talking throughout this Advent season about the reality of our weariness. For some personal weariness, for some communal weariness. We experience it in different ways, but it is hard to deny that there is much in this world that makes us weary. And so in this season, we have given ourselves permission to name what makes us weary. Something that for many of us who were raised to put on a happy face is actually quite a difficult discipline. We've also been encouraged to connect with one another and to allow those connections to be places of joy, places that give us a reprieve from all that wearies us. What if, as we seek Joy in a weary world? What if we add to our list that we start allowing ourselves to be amazed? This is about an intentional discipline of choosing amazement, choosing to pause long enough to notice that which is unexpected, choosing to quiet ourselves and the voices within and around us long enough to be aware of the ways God is showing up. And... This is an intentional discipline of allowing ourselves to be amazed because especially in these times, our weariness can get in the way of our even being able to get wrapped up in wonder, absorbed in unexpected delight. But what if... What if we allowed ourselves to be amazed? What would that mean for our lives? What would we notice if we decided to choose amazement? What would we delight in if we embrace the toddler within each of us who stopped and watched and embraced the wonder of the world around us? One of the things I love most at Christmas time 
is to be in a store and to come across usually an end cap at an aisle, an end cap filled with boxes of amaryllis or paper whites just ready to be taken home and watered. Too often we forget to be amazed by the process of things that grow, yet it only takes one of these in my home to capture my attention day after day, to become that thing that I delight to see each morning as visible growth is always taking place. But what would it take for me, for us, to notice the world around us not only in a quick growing plant or twinkling lights of this season, but to notice the world around us always. What if we found ourselves not just excited, but sitting with amazement each time a child was born? What if we found ourselves sitting with amazement each time a person took their last breath? What if we found ourselves choosing to be amazed at each sunrise that causes us to catch our breath? What if we found ourselves choosing to be amazed with each delicious morsel of food that both delights our taste buds and nourishes our bodies? What if we found ourselves choosing to be amazed by both the big and little things around us. In the book, The Color Purple, one character says to another, I think it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. Friends, you know me. I'm not all that concerned with our worrying about what upsets God. I think there's enough grace for all of us to go around. But I do believe that God wants us to delight in all of the amazing gifts around us and within us and between us. Some of you are familiar with Anne Lamott's book, Help Thanks Wow, The Three Essential Prayers. We, around here, talk a lot about thanks, about prayers of gratitude. In fact, just recently I reminded you of that quote from Meister Eckhart where he acknowledges that thank you might just be prayer enough. And help, it's certainly a prayer we've been known to pray, isn't it? It cries out from our very being when life is hard or things are uncertain or a crisis is unfolding. But what about wow? How often is that our prayer? Perhaps the Advent season is a great time for us to intentionally slow down, to look, to listen, to feel, to taste, to touch, to notice all that is around us, ordinary and extraordinary and to allow ourselves to be amazed. And maybe in our amazement, we will find God's love breaking through, God's justice being done, God's peace becoming a reality, God's joy filling our souls. May it be so. In a weary world, it's easy to focus on the negative. The war and destruction, the violence and hate, the amount of need, whether it be for food, health care, or housing, the amount of loneliness. It's really quite easy for the weariness of our world to drown out the positives, the awe, the amazement that we also live in the midst of every day. Our brains actually recall negative information and experiences better and faster than we do positive ones. So we actually need to be quite proactive about seeking the positive and noting the places and times 
when we are amazed. We have to choose to be observant and give ourselves permission to wonder without searching for the right answers. So let us choose to be amazed. In the midst of violence, let us be amazed each time we see peace at work. In the face of hate, let us celebrate the times that love is chosen instead. When those who are in need are met with abundant generosity, let us be in awe of the compassion of others. In our weary world, may we be amazed by the number of people who reach out to help. Let us be in awe over the amount of support that comes together when people come together and pool their time and their resources. Here at First Christian, we are amazed by all of you. Whether it's our nearly 100% pledge fulfillment rate, the $8,000 that you all gave through the alternative gift market this season, which goes on to support our local helping organizations, how it's for the sign-up to serve at the free lunch program fills in record time, or how our baptistry is overflowing with sweatpants and underwear and socks for people in our community. We are grateful for you. And we are grateful for the ways that you support and help to grow the ministries that we share together. If you would like to give financial offerings to First Christian, that can be done by mailing a check to the address on our screen or by visiting our website and clicking on the donate button. Let us choose amazement and let us continue to give generously and with love in all times and all places. As we ready ourselves to share communion, if you haven't already, this is a great time to pause and to go get the elements that you will receive for communion today. So what does it take to make us stop, to pause in awe and wonder? Does it take some big, unexpected, once-in-a-lifetime experience? Or does it simply take ordinary food, bread, and juice shared between ordinary people, you and me. Maybe we need to sit in awe at this table a little more often, because when we come here, we remember that Jesus took normal, 
everyday items and added new significance, new meaning. We remember that he gathered with flawed human beings and invited them to be part of something amazing. Maybe we should be amazed that the morsel of bread we will eat is more than bread. It is an invitation to participate with Jesus in the healing of the world. Maybe we should be amazed that the juice we drink is more than juice. It is a reminder of the love of God that flows through us and gives us life. Maybe we should be amazed at the people around this table who are not just our friends or people like us, but who are all of God's beloved. So we come to this table in awe, and we remember that when Jesus was with his friends, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he offered it to them, saying, this is my body. So that when we eat of the bread, we offer our bodies to continue his work in this world. Then Jesus passed a cup and said, This cup is a new covenant between us. And because we understand it to be a covenant of love, whenever we drink of the cup, we invite God's loving spirit to flow through us. Friends, it is time. Let us share in this meal. Please pray with me. Lord, as we come to this table today, we are blessed with the ability to be amazed. Perhaps it is the sunrise announcing a new day when our hearts flutter in complete awe of life or seeing the beauty of the changing in the leaves in the fall or witnessing some honor bestowed on an individual or even a child. These acts are similar to the complete amazement of the relatives when both Zachariah and Elizabeth named their baby John. Think about our senses of taste, touch, hearing, seeing, or smelling. These are something to be overjoyed as well. But say you lose your ability to speak as Zachariah did and then regain it. How amazing. The list is endless, and our hearts are overjoyed when this occurs. Thanks to you, Lord. 
As we leave today, may we think of those times we have been amazed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family of faith, as you leave this time and this space, you go into a weary world. So speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection and hold on to hope. And remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. <laughs>